Gentlemen, all protocols observed, I'll be very brief. I am invited in my capacity as one of the members of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee as a joint committee with the Senate Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, Senator Catherine Muma, a few other members. Just to say first that uh, I'm going to talk about very briefly the IBC amendment going through the National Assembly, it's before the Senate. And as we talk about it, there are three things that are standing out. One is what the speakers have already spoken about, especially in terms of their that is and Senator Ambua knows and Senator Edwin Sifuna is what was the path to take. Um, in the interest of moving forward, it was chosen to take the path through Parliament. And it comes with the vulgaries of Parliament. And those are the vulgaries of Parliament. We have started seeing them. That will not be the last. They will keep coming. So we must be alive. is uh, as a consequence we then must suffer the tragedy of our <laughs> stolen majority in parliament and that stolen majority has reduced us to a situation where our leaders are called leaders of minority when they should actually be leaders of majority yes. Yes. and with that it then subjects us even in the joint of Kenya and the deputy chairs, unlike in the NATCO talks, where there was what we'd call and the third res result of that uh, numbered in that committee we have, including retention of a comma including from the NADCO team is reflected in what we are discussing instead of focusing on how to pass it. We are reduced, thirdly, to a situation where we, we are subjected to very interesting I think in the National Assembly and even in the Senate, we were given 45 days. The then interprets those 45 days. The consequence is immense. Because in a week, Parliament sits on three days. Instead of seven, in a month you only have 12 days. And if you exclude recess, you, in, you move basically from 45 days to almost five months. And that's where we are headed. The tragedy then, the tragedy therefore is that in my considered opinion, there is liturgy from our counterparts on the other side. There is minimal interest in moving the NADCO report and the bills forward. And the IBC amendment B only bill in which there appears to be a commonality of interest that they selected to start with. It was not even subjected to a discussion by the committee. But we were That lies ahead, and, it, and uh, we will be coming back to that. In terms of the call for the members of the National Assembly, now because we discussed it and passed it, it's now before the Senate. I think it was sent to the Senate last week, so the Senate will be considering it. Uh, there's a matrix we developed which I'll share with Stewart, uh, Senator Stewart Mazayo, just to understand. We confirmed, and having gotten the draft bills, paragraph by paragraph, and we were happy to confirm that at least insofar as there was no amendment, it came as it came from. But as is expected with the vulgaries of parliament, 
on. So there were hearings, there were presentations, and some of them, as you know, are usually prearranged. <laughs> you know. So anyway, but fortunately, there were no substantial amendments. There are only five um, areas which I would point out, and they are not fundamental. They were just to align the is in respect of the term of the secretary, which so far as the chief executive and secretary of the IBC. The NADCO team, after hearing public participation, uh, it was decided that it should be four years renewable ones. That's the consequential but it was thought it is necessary in terms of experience and is in terms of um, review of a general election what you'd call an audit and the bill requires that what we were now demanding as standalone should be routine the IBC should do a review of the general election within one year of any election after some discussions, it was thought one year might be so it was extended to 18 months. It's not really consequential. The third area is in respect of which was now expanded from seven to nine. It was permitted that eligible to be considered in the new panel. But what then the committee realized is that the for enabling the new selection panel to commence its work. So that was of, um, just proper commencement. Additionally, it was realized that there was no clear mechanism for financing there were some proposals to make the presidency finance. In some, it was the Public Service Commission. The panel is fundamentally appointed. It's the Parliamentary Service Commission that should provide the budget. And so that was included. That is in strengthening the provisions. It's not altering. Number four, the transitional clause. There was a transitional clause to dissolve the current selection panel. I think I spoke to that, but not to now activate the new panel. I'd already sp I spoke to that, especially in terms of the future panels, not just the current. So that was tidied up a bit. Um, and then secondly, it was to provide timelines, because there was no clear timelines uh, for within what time should the president appoint. So it was that uh, the selection panel will forward the names to the president with an IBC and that the president should only have a maximum of seven days actually as uh, had been captured by senior counsel and our principal Kalonzo Musioka that it's a negotiation prior negotiation. So there's no reason that it should uh, is about the definition of parliamentary parties. Uh, it was uh, noted that the selection panel, uh, you know, the parliamentary parties would participate, but there was no definition in the act. So an in, uh, provision was in and all that was Order 20A that defines parliamentary as a minimum of five members. Yeah, five percent, yes, not five members, five five percent. And that's what was lifted. Now in the Senate it is different. That was lif lifted was limited to the National Assembly. It does not say parliament, it says the National Assembly. So I think this is one area where the Senate might be well guided to make sure there is no amendment to say Parliament. Let our problems in the National Assembly stay with us in the National Assembly. And then we have sense of the amendment. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Honorable.